Hi, Steve Pitts here. Um, I thought I'd try and do um, or explain really the history behind the thinking of fishing for bites. Um, I started fishing for eels 79. I fished solely for eels ever since. Um, my passion for fishing for eels has never wavered really. Um, that's summer, spring, winter. Um, I've kind of tried to take that to greater challenges with fishing, very low density pits, uh, usually massive in size. Um, I love the challenge of that. Um, every time I blank, I get more excited. My mind works the opposite of most people, whereas the more I blank, the more excited I get. Um, a lot of people will target a low density water and after 10 nights um, they lose their confidence and they move on and I think it's a massive mistake to be honest. I think as long as you can, as long as you're getting your rigs um, effective for lip hooking, uh, I think it would be a massive benefit to try targeting low density waters. Um, Sometimes it can happen on the first night and you can get a PB. Um, another time it can take 100 nights without a bite. It's just having that mindset to stick at it. But I must emphasize, if you are not lipping up, lip hooking your eels um, fairly consistently, then um, I would fish waters where there's a, either a medium amount of eels, large amount of eels, just to get your confidence with your rigs. Um, otherwise, you know, it's frustrating if you get, you might, on some of the waters I fish, I might only get three opportunities a year, no opportunities a year, five opportunities in two years. So um, it's very important that I nail my fish. Um, basically, I fished what I consider appallingly for the first 10 years, basically following everybody else with this concept of fishing like everybody does, open bail arm fishing for runs. And um, it took many, many years for me to put bits and bobs together, pieces in the jigsaw came together over many, many years of frustration, really, and, um, and making massive, amount, massive amounts of mistakes, um, you know, trying to have some sort of wonder rig, which is absolutely not the way to go. It's just basic logical common sense um, almost every time and the way my mind works is just that um, I'm a, I, I absolutely am a stickler for everything being absolutely 110% in my rig presentation I, and as long as I know I've done absolutely everything possible um, then I'm, I, I'm a happy bunny but um, the, the actual biggest um, game changer for me in 40 years of fishing for eels is 30 years ago latching onto the idea of actually fishing for bites. Now fishing for bites <clears throat> basically uh, to put it in simple terms it's um, it's fishing really with um, a bobbin. Now th these bobbins this is on a um, this is actually on a um, helicopter rig and I use these, uh, I mean a bobbin's a bobbin, but I've used these garden, these are uh, uh, margin masters, um, I don't know if you can even buy them anymore. And if I'm fishing, um, if I'm fishing on a tight line, which I do, I use bowstring, bowstring tight lines, then I add a weight on here to register the dropbacks. It's just a little clip, made up my own chains because I'm a bit fussy with the weight of my chains. Over here I've got one on a Dyson. So this has got no weight on and it's this, the weight of this is balanced out with the float perfectly. So um, if I get a take then that's where the bobbin will be. This is obviously all with the um, bail arms closed. Now um, basically what I'd, fishing for bites is a concept of using your bobbins. I, I describe it as fishing like quiver tipping but with the use of a bobbin. When you've done this for years and years and years, you do actually start to read your bites. Um, you know, little pulls and tweaks. Um, but um, I can honestly say over the last certainly 
15, 20 years, virtually all of my big eels have come from literally from there, particularly on the Dyson, from there, I'll get a typical tweak and sometimes a little drop back. And then as that's going up, before it hits the bait runner, I just, uh, it's all on a tight line, lift into it and I nail them virtually every time. The, the, the difference between fishing that like this than the standard waiting for a run is massive. As long as you get all the concepts that right in what I did in the other video, um, i.e. heavy leads, hook size, bait size, um, that's something that people are finally latching on to, which is good. Um, but if you're fishing, um, if you're fishing uh, a shock rig and you're fishing um, off the bait runners, for instance, um, basically it's the same principle. It's still fishing for bites. If you feel it fishing a helicopter rig, you're still fishing for bites. Um, it's not an easy route to go and sleep in, um, in your chair and hope, oh, it's just going to rip off. If you don't get all the finer points in place, uh, it'll either work for you or against you. And um, so whatever rig you're using, basically the principle is fishing for bites. So if you're fishing off your clutches, my advice, if you're going to fish off a clutch, use a bait clip so it's more direct rather than directly off your bait runner. Um, so it's tight. Personally, if I'm going to use a shock rig type rig, um, I use a shock rig out there. Um, I use a tubing, inline lead, take the, the centre bit out, bead on the back. I can adjust the bead um, and I can tweak that. And so when I get a take out there, um, it, it's more direct. It's, it's direct to that end rather than this end, if that makes sense. And I apply that principle, whatever I use, if I'm using anti-jet rigs or whatever, I don't do it this end, I do it that end. Closer it is to the eel, the bigger the shock of the hook and the impact. This is only my opinion. There are times when I do fish off the um, bait runner and that's when I'm using a commitment rig as I call it and that's completely different. I won't go into that although I'd be rabbiting forever. I just wanted to get, so if you're fishing bobbins, close bail arm uh, and you're using your bobbins as indication on um, a bolt rig, on a running rig, on a Dyson rig, basically it's the same principle. It's the same thing really. Uh, people put a different take on it, but it is the same thing. It's fishing for bites. So I just thought I'd, I'd get that. And this has come about after years and years. It's, it looks quite simple, but um, as individual anglers, what we have to do is um, do the tweaks and get all the little tweaks right on different waters, um, fishing off a, a, a bolt rig, can be the kiss of death on another water it can be hugely successful uh, i think that's personally down to what they're feeding on how they're feeding whether they're grazers roamers um, the waters that i fish are a target grazers eels that are moving so slowly and grazing on the natural food um, this is where all of this comes in critical and it's all of fishing for bites has actually come about um, from actually fishing for twitchy takes and over the last 30 years my lip hooking rate is 97 percent at least and that might you know that if you think of that over thousands of nights not just a season that is massive compared to what it used to be in my early days um, i'd probably lip hook one eel in every 10 runs in those days which was terrible and incredibly inefficient just very quickly i'll go through the bags because a lot of people have been asking about the bags now um so what we've got here we've got i've just made these up very quickly just to show you um hook size bait size is so critical these are actually got prawns in now the advantage with bags is oh, so many advantages with bags. I can tailor the hook size, my bait size to what I want for a given situation. If I'm on a water and the eels are roamers, I'll use a bigger, a bigger bait generally if they're fish eaters, etc. 
Um, if they've got really tiny mouths and they're feeding on the natural food, I use tiny little baits. I mean, that isn't a tiny bait, believe me. I've used much, much smaller. And um, so basically the bag is, I, I tie the bag up with the arm mesh, put my bait in as, as standard really. And then I put the hook through the bag so that the hook, the hook's only just um, exposed. These are not finished. These are just to show you. Now, if you was to fish that as it is, uh, everything for me is over little one percenters that add up. Now that, that to me is inefficient for me personally because there's too much metal work exposed. Same as this one here. Now if you put if you put a little stop on there and you tighten that bag right up, it takes away the element. If I get a, if I get if I'm on a um, helicopter rig and start getting a few funny takes. And um, what happens very often, it pulls the bag down, so it brings it down to the bend of the hook, which tells me that I've, it, it's, I've had a definite take, nearly always an eel, because it, it, the, the power, you know, they spin on the bags as well, so they'll rip the bags open. It's a just a little pointer for me to know what's happening out there in the first place. Um, but, um, so what I prefer to do, like, if you look at this here, um, there's a lot of hook, you know, there's a lot of metal work there. Eels definitely detect metal work. And the, the, the least amount of metal work you can have, the better. So this one here, I don't know if you can see that. That one, I've put a little tiny soft rubber maggot and that's threaded over the hook, just behind the micro bar, just behind it. It's sufficient to hold my bait in place, um, but, can you see the difference in the amount of metal work that's on display? It's, um, I mean, that's, I would tweak that actually. It would be slightly less than that. When I tie these bags on, you can put anything in these bags. It's just down to your imagination. Um, but when I tie these bags, sometimes I'll tie them three times, four times until I'm absolutely, I'm convinced, you know, till I'm absolutely happy with it. These have got a little, this one's got a bit of shrink tubing. That's my favorite way of having a, a, um, an anti-eject. The mesh is anti-eject itself. Um, the mesh will work for you or against you. If you get all these little tweaks wrong, it will work against you because the eel's teeth get caught in the mesh. And if you, if you don't get this right, hook size, bait size, they'll spin on the bag and you'll, you'll miss a take or they'll just rip it off of it. Get it right, and the anti-jet properties are fantastic. Um, when I first started using this concept, I was using my wife's uh, nylons, a uh, tights, and I was using bits of nylon, and it was absolute nightmare tying the bags up. But the the joy with that is the actual. Um, it's so fine. It, it's even more anti-jet than the armor mesh, but. I really, really rate this armor mesh now. It makes, it's made my life so much easier. When this first came out all those years ago, um, I was just buzzing because I thought, oh, it's made it so much easier for me. But, so I hope that's given you insight. Um, these hook links are, that's three inches, three inches. This one is about four inches long. That is what I consider a long hook link. Um, once you go into six inches, five inches, they're just too long um, because if the eel moves towards you left or right, it's a huge amount of um, movement without you getting any indication on those bobbins. Um, so this is my opinion. If you're on a water where there's a large head of eels, what they generally do they feed entirely differently. They will come in, snatch that bait, and they're gone. You fish a low density pit, small amount of eels, they're what I call grazers, and they're just finicky, and they'll just mouth that bait, and if you haven't got it right, it will work against you. But once you use these bags, if you want, you know, if you give this a go, and just um, a little bit of logic, common sense, tweak them, and it's certainly been a game changer for me, um, I haven't used closed bail, open bail arms, I beg your pardon, for, as I say, 30 years, and I couldn't go back to it. Um, it's just so inefficient. This is only my opinion, and um, so I, you know, it's, it, it, if 
The other thing I will say, whatever you use, if it's working, even if it's open bail arm, if you are nailing them and lip hooking them, don't change. If you're using Barry's twig um, and you're lip hooking them, don't change. Uh, Barry's somebody I've got immense respect for. And uh, if he says something, I listen. Um, absolutely think Barry's wonderful pioneer. I love his pioneering spirit. Fantastic. Um, every time, th th this was all really me opening up was uh, really, I thought it was about time to get across lip hooking from a conservation point of view. Every time I've had an opportunity, I've pushed fishing for bites, so I shall continue to do so. Um, I think a good motto would be, don't use your scissors, use your forceps. And that kind of explains everything really. The only downside with lip hooking eels, you will get lots of holes in your nets, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, and thinking of conservation, one person springs to mind, and this person has been started eel fishing same year as me, 79, been a really good mate ever since, and he has done more for eel conservation than anybody I know giving up his own time and everything he's never had any creditation for that he's never even had so much as a pat on the back as far as i'm aware all in his own time that guy's clive dennison and if you ever watch this clive massive thank you from me um i don't think people realize just how much hard work you put into eel conservation dealing with the right people and getting the message across and massive thank you for that Okay, I feel I've ravited on far too long, as I generally always do. I hope that's been helpful, and um, yeah, give it a go.